Hi, very good morning. I am Dr. Janak Patel, MD, General Physician. All my video lectures are mainly for educative purpose. We are going to discuss today in continuity with the previous lecture regarding CNS examination or we call nervous system examination. Now here I am showing you one video clip. There is a very nice demonstration of all cerebellar different signs. So just pay attention and look and listen properly. So here we'll be showing you cerebellar function examination. And this is a very nice demonstration. First introduction is being done. She is having little slurred speech. Speech is affected. She is washing her hand. She is asking a person to walk. You can see there is an ataxia. Wide base. Leg of precision. So patient is swaying from one side. Sways around on both the sides. Truncal ataxia. And even the head movement. We call titubation. She is not able to move in a smooth way. She is showing the jerky movements of her body when she walks. You can again try to walk like one more time. Can she walk? Let us see. Yes. So you can see her trunk and head. See wide base. Sways on both the side. Truncal ataxia. Truncal ataxia. The jerky movements of head and trunk is called is called titubation. They are bobbing movements. So she got a problem with the movements. The, 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 we are judging here, we are judging here that movements are not smooth. All of us have got a smooth movement. If you walk, you see, we can walk like this. This is our smooth. This is normal walk. His doctor is He's demonstrating. And I got an accurate speed. I know what speed I have to walk. Right? This is a very smooth movement. But when we when we see in this patient, we find that she goes like like this. Not moving the she's not the movements are not coordinated. They are lacking the amplitude. Sometimes she walks like this, sometimes like this, sometimes slow, all distorted movements. This is what happens in the cerebellar disorder. Our movements won't be smooth. Right? It is a the main brunt in case of cerebellar disorder, the main brunt is on the movements. You just have to judge with whether the movements of the patients are smooth or not. If you find it is not smooth, the cause can be cerebellar. Any moment, if she drinks, if she eats, if she holds objects, we will judge all the movements. Whether she can touch properly some objects, whether the moment touching the object is smooth, coordinated or not, all those moments will be tested. So this was one form of testing her walking. We have found that she is not able to able to keep the equilibrium. She is not able to keep the normal balance. There is this. We call that as ataxia, cerebellar ataxia. supposed to contract and relax that is not happening in this patient. Okay. Yeah, what else you want to examine? So now I will show you to walk in this uh, photo. Now that is called as a tandem walking. Walk. It will not be possible in cerebellar ataxia. So she is explaining so how to walk. Tandem gait in people 
Who got a mild form of cere cerebellar dis disorder? Who got a mild form of cerebellar disorder? That is walking in a straight line. Mild form, then we should adopt the tendon gear. Because in slight lesion of the cerebellum, the people will show unsteadiness. The this is tandem walking. The person will not walk smoothly and properly. He won't walk in a straight line. So he'll not be able to walk so even the because of cerebellar damage. In cerebellum, you will easily detect it when you ask. Because he cannot maintain the balance. Again, giving the support because if, if if the examiner will not give the support, she has tendency to fall. She will fall on the ground. She cannot. So when she tries to tries to yes, she, she will tend to, to fall. Now, so if a so person is falling on the right side, sorry. invariably it is a damage to the right cerebellar hemisphere. If a person has got tending to fall on the left side, left cerebellar hemisphere, tending to fall on both the side, right as well as left. Then damage to both hemisphere or even vermis. And some person tends to fall back. That is again damage to vermis. Now, Rombok test. So, say, supposed to stand with two legs together, two hands by the side. First, initially, eye open and then eye closed. Now, see that when even with eye open also, with two legs together, she is tending to fall. So, we call this as Rombok test positive. So, whether with eye open or with eye closed, a person with two legs together tends to fall. It is cerebellum. Never always stand by the side of the person. Always stand by the side of the person. In sensory, with eye open, person will be able to maintain. And with eye close, rhombic test will become more sensitive and person will have a tendency to fall. Here, person will tend to fall on both the sides. Sensory ataxia can be easily differentiated from cerebellum. He is explaining how exactly the balance is being maintained. The state of relaxation of the muscle. So by this, the cerebellum is aware where is the position of joint and whether the muscles are contracted or not contracted, whether they are relaxed or not relaxed. So cerebellum remains aware. So if we cut this circuit, if we cut the spinocerebellar tract, then cerebellum would not know it. With the result, the, 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 she won't be knowing where, whether I am, whether my joints are extended or they are flexed. So she will sit like this because the input, the sensory input will not go to the cerebellum. This is Dr. Bashir Hamma. Basically, basically a test for cerebellar tract. It is not test for cerebellum. You understand the point? about the tone in case of cerebellar disorder. We know that in cerebellar disorder in cerebellar disorders 
there will be hypotonia. The tone is, the description of the tone is the state of physiological contraction of the muscles. In because the voice quality is little while recording. There is little that is low to low voice. And in patients That's why I'm mentioning in between. There will be tone. The state of of now you can see she is having little nodding of the head. Is this is called titubation. It is because the cerebellum it controls the tone. It keeps some muscles contracted and some muscles relaxed. You see, she can only sit like this. This is a sign of incoordination. When some muscles will contract and some muscles will relax, then only she can adopt this posture. For example, I got a limb. If I have to extend the limb like this, right? Or I have to flex the limb like this. If I have to flex like this, then some of my muscles should contract. My flexors of the arm should contract. Then only I can flex it. And the extensor should relax. Then only I can adopt this posture. So who is doing this? It is, it is, it, it is doing the cerebellum takes part in it. Cerebellum allows some muscles to contract. It allows some muscles to relax. And it is doing it through anterior horn cell. Because it is the anterior horn cell that... How much to contract, how much to relax, all that is done by cerebellum. That is we call coordination. So through these, they got connections in the spinal cord. The force, the distance, cerebellum, cerebellum sends some tracks down. that is all regulated by cerebellum. For example, there are three important tracks. One track is called a tectospinal track. Another is called a reticulospinal track. And third is called as vestibular spinal tract. Now vestibule, vestibular nuclei gives connection to the cerebellum and it takes connection from the cerebellum, like vestibular cerebellar tract or cerebellar vestibular tract. The cerebellum also gives connection to the tectum. Tectum is a portion, dorsal portion in the midbrain. So cerebellum gives connection to the tectum. And tectum then sends the fibers to the spinal cord. You understand the friends? It sends to the, to the spinal cord and from spinal cord, these tectospinal fibers, they are distributed to head and neck. So our movements of head and neck and the contraction of relaxation of muscles in the head and neck is done by the tectospinal cord. You understand the friends? And there are reticular nuclei in the brain stem. There are reticular nuclei in the midbrain, in the pons, and in the medulla. Cerebellum gives connection to these nuclei. So there is a cerebellum reticular tract. And then from reticular nuclei, tract goes to spinal cord. Then there is a reticular spinal tract. He is explaining how exactly the cerebellum is controlling this tone, posture, equilibrium, etc. It is taking part in also maintenance of tone, posture, equilibrium and coordination. You understand my Now, when patient got a hypotonia, when muscles are not contracted in a, in a normal way, the patient will become flabby. Its movements will become loose because there is no tautness, there is no tautness, tightness in the muscles. They are very flabby and loose. There is hypotonia. So you won't feel the stiffness in the patient. You understand the point? So we will call that as hypotonia, which will happen when somebody has got cerebellar disorder. Because it was the cerebellum which was controlling all this, all these things. When cerebellum is knocked off, that will person it will result in hypotonia. So you can check. He's looking for the tone. This is passive movement. So he is checking the flexion extension of the limb and observing whether there is stiffness. He's demonstrating the tone by doing passive movement.
it is hypotonia you will get hypotonia in upper motor neuron and extra pyramidal damage in cerebellar you will get decreased tone or we call hypotonia Now this is pendular knee jerk, which is very characteristic in a cerebellar. You can see that after one tap, you are getting contraction, relaxation, contraction, relaxation. But this is slow contraction and slow relaxation, not jerky. When you get that jerky, it is called pendular knee, not pendular knee jerk. It is called patellar clonus. Now this is rebound phenomena. Now she is asked to so flex here, against the resistance. The so that should not be undershooting or overshooting. Goes overshooting. Normally in normal Means in cerebellar you do not have judgment of how much distance to go in cerebellar lesion. Rebound phenomena present in this patient. So you do it again. Again, you can see against resistance is asked to flex. That is overshooting. Now do it how it is to be done. So you put a hand like this. Now do it. Now she will, she will not hit her because he put the he he adopted. So that person doesn't hit the face. Rebound phenomena. Yes. You can demonstrate in other side also. So it overshoots now. How how will you do this? Yes, like this. Yes. So we find that the test is positive. The Idealist is not having any cerebellar disease. This is just demonstration. Right. Creating. So that you can understand what are the findings. This is upper limb in coordination. We call finger to finger taste, finger to nose taste. And simultaneously we will see the intentional tremor. See when she is reaching the nose, she is having intentional tremor. Overshooting, undershooting, pass pointing, it will and at the time when reaching that point, there will be intentional tremor plus post pointing, overshooting, undershooting. She is not reaching the precise destiny. Dysmetria, that is to judge the distance, inability to judge how much distance to go. Hypermetria, hypometria, hypermetria or hypo. Overshooting, undershooting. This is overshooting. These are all the characteristic findings in case of cerebellar damage or cerebral findings, cerebral disorders. Very nice way of demonstration. This is called finger nose test. There is a she and that is done in upper limb in coordination. So 
How much distance? Etc. cannot be judged. That will be called dysmetria. This is one of the features of cerebellar disorder. Can you do this, 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 this arm now? Can you do this arm? Yes. You be there. So do check this arm also. So this arm also you will see. Now this is on the left side. You can see while touching the nose, there is in coordination. Over sitting in coordination. A normal person will be very easily able to do that. While here there is an intentional tremors, dysmetria, hyper hypo, overshooting, undershooting. This is together we call that as an in coordination. This is another way of demonstrating in coordination. See here, the, the, the moments are shaky. She is not able to put the precise... When they reach the target, they cannot. Time, that is undershooting, overshooting, dysmetria. But after a hard struggle, she is able to put the pen in the cap. Normally, if we have to do, we will do like this. You just show me like this. If normally I have to do, I just put straight like this. It takes fraction of a second. For a normal people. But what has happened to her? The problem with her is she can't do it fast. The speed is the speed is deranged. Amplitude of speed, is distance, etc. is affected. Judgment regarding those are affected. And, and all those together are called deranged. in coordination. Precision of the moment, duration of the moment, amplitude of the moment, speed of moment, everything is disorganized. Speed, direction, distance, force, all that is done by cerebellum, judgment regarding those. The moment. We are trying different kinds of moments. Our aim is to try the different kind, kinds of the moments. We are trying that whether, will she be able to put the pen in the cap. So again, you just tell, tell this, putting a pen in the cap. And see what, what is happening here, how hard it is for her to put, put this. See the shaky movements, the tremors, exaggerated when it, she takes overshoots. Very difficult for her, taking time, very slow, after a hard struggle, putting the pen in the cap. So we got one more confirmation that her movements are not, not smooth. Now, if we do the repetitive movements, now, we'll see whether... Now, didecokinesia, repetitive alternative movements. Like this, you try like this, do it like this. See, do fast, fast, fast. She is not able to do fast. She is doing it slow. The repetitive movements are not like us. We do very fast. She is swaying, she is doing movement like this. It is not fast. We do very fast. If I do count the fingers like this, we do very fast. She it takes time for her. She is not able to do, do it. So repetitive movement. That is called ardideco kinesia. Also deranged, also impaired in this patient. Because cerebellum is meant for movements. Isn't it? So our aim is to judge the movements, whether our movements of the body are okay or not. We are finding everywhere, movements are everywhere disturbed. Yes, sir. Then we do what is called as we do what is called as the alternate movements, isn't it? So check the alternate movements. This is again an alternative movement. Dideco kinesia. He is asking her to do as fast as possible. This is alternate movements of the hands. This didaco kinesia when person is not able to do alternate rapid movement. Di means two. Diado, di, diado, 
alternate movements rapid movements this is this didaco kinesia or a didaco kinesia this didaco kinesia the alternating movements are disturbed the alternating movements of the rapid alternate movements limbs or hands is impaired in this period. this is classical sign in a case of a cerebellar disorder disorder cerebellar damage okay. Okay. see how much faster even you can do it alternate movement on the legs these are the some of the games you are playing during your childhood so that will be also affected fast and accurate her movements not accurate she is having this diadoco kinesia that alternating movement is called diadoco kinesia so this is toe to finger test she wants to this is heel knee test finger finger it is, finger, finger, it is jerky again finger to or a finger to toe test or heel knee test for finding out in coordination in lower limb it is jerky on both the in coordination in lower limb you can see the so she can't touch intentional tremors properly toe finger test or you can ask the person to move from heel towards the toe that is called heel knee test knee heel test etc so examiner are showing to do alternate tapping movement the way we did the repetition here so we doing the repetition here so she is not person will find difficulty in doing those alternate movement even in lower limb tapping in a circle or ta alternate tapping of the foot that will be affected this is in coordination in lower limb lower limb in coordination now this is heel shin test or heel knee test your heel is touch to the knee and then you bring it down to the ankle over the sheen of tibia sliding it over the sheen of the sliding it down along the sheen of tibia you can see that there is an intentional tremors and plus plus there is a jerky jerky movements we call intentional tremors will be there and plus there will be little overshooting undershooting the distance will not be judged movement you can see the another leg also the same problem that you can repeat the test with other limb also slide smoothly over the shin of the these are all the signs beautifully demonstrated heel shin test or heel knee test knee heel test lower limb she can't walk properly whatever word you want to use properly nothing is smooth in this patient or because smooth conduction of movements not possible by the cerebellum she got a cerebellar lesion she got a cerebellar disease going to show you now the movements of eyes what happens to the movements of eyes in case of cerebellar disorder in case of cerebellar disorder the movements of eyes will also be jerky the the movements will also be shaky right and this jerky movement of the eyes is called we call nystagmus so in cerebellar disorder there will be nystagmus and we have to know whether there is these jerky movements are there or not so we do we will examine the patient we will see whether she can she can pursue the eye movement smoothly so now if she is she is looking at the finger whether she can move smoothly she can pursue the movements of finger this way and that way if there is any jerky movement but that nystagmus will be very frequently horizontal or maybe vertical or maybe even rotational like this then the vertical nystagmus in cerebellar disorder it will be there and the eye movement is which part of cerebellum controls this eye movement which part is controlling it is the vestibulo cerebellum which controls the eye movement vestibulo cerebellum 
Because vestibular, this is, you see the cerebellum has got three parts. One is spinocerebellum. Functionally, the functionally cerebellum has three parts. One is the spinocerebellum, which has got connection with the spinal cord. The another part of cerebellum is cerebros, cerebrocerebellum. Cerebro, cerebellum. This part of cerebellum has got mainly connection with cerebrum. So it is called as cerebrocerebellum. The another part is vestibular cerebellum. It is called vestibular cerebellum because it has got connection with vestibular nuclei. And vestibular <coughs> nuclei gets connection from ear, vestibular apparatus. And vestibular apparatus controls our head movement and controls our eye movement. The eyes move in relation to head movement or neck movement. You understand my point? So if there is a problem in vestibular cerebellar tract or vestibular nuclei or in the ear or in the vestibular cerebellum, then this eye movement or head and neck movement will be jerky. It won't be so much. So we will check whether in this patient vestibular cerebellum is affected or not. If affected, if there is nystagmus, if there is jerky movements of eyes, it means vestibular cerebellum is also involved in the, the part of cerebellum, which is vestibular cerebellum, is also involved in this patient, is also damaged. So you can check the nystagmus in this patient. So she is following the finger fingers, right? She's going the eyes. You will have right horizontal down. nystagmus, vertical and nystagmus, nystagmus, and you can have rotational yeah. nystagmus. So you can see that she These are all the different signs which you can demonstrate in a cerebellar lesions. You do the horizontally again. Yes, you can find she giving the jerks, yes. So jerky movements of eyes, so that means? So, this was a demonstration of all cerebellar different signs. Good number of signs were demonstrated in this. So, this will be very helpful to you. If you like this particular lecture, video clip, don't forget to press button like. I am very thankful to Dr. Ahmed Bashir for nicely demonstrating this. This is being utilized for mainly educative purpose. So thank you all for taking out time. I know that your time is valuable and I appreciate that you have spent some of the time with me. See you in next lecture. And if you have got any suggestion, please don't forget to give your suggestions.